Welcome back to Xbox Corner, my name's Luke and we're back for what is to be the final roundup of Xbox Game Pass titles for this the month of June. And after a strong start to the month, unfortunately we only have a couple of new titles to round off this month with. But at the end of this video we'll also be covering off the games leaving the service. With that said though, hit that like button to subscribe for more Xbox deals, reviews, Game Pass roundups and graphical comparisons and let's get into it. So kicking things off with a bit of an announcement then, we have a bunch of games which have received touchscreen support for cloud gaming. These include the recently released Bug Snacks, Life is Strange True Colours and several of the Ninja Gaiden games, which I assume you have to be an absolute gaming god to play with, as those games are nails enough using a standard controller. On to our first new title though, which unfortunately for console gamers is for PC Game Pass only for the time being, we have Total War Three Kingdoms. Now if you're not familiar with the Total War games, this is a series which combines turn-based strategy with real-time tactical gameplay and has previously seen crossovers with the Warhammer franchise. Total War Three Kingdoms though taps into the whole historical Chinese Han Dynasty era stuff, popularised by games such as the Dynasty Warrior series, and the story centres around the events leading up to the Three Kingdoms period. In an effort to make the game more accessible though, it now comes with two modes of play. Records mode which offers a more realistic style of gameplay as found in most of the previous Total War games and Romance mode which additionally allows you to play as famous warlords of the era controlling them in battle, each possessing their own special abilities and able to single handedly decimate large groups of enemy troops. As expected though, gameplay alternates between strategic movement of your armies and expansion of your kingdom and large scale real time battles in which you get to command armies of foot soldiers, archers and horseback riders. Amongst the new features, the game's diplomacy system has also been overhauled, taking a lot of the guesswork out of it, and of course you'll be using this alongside your prowess in battle to dominate the opposition, develop and expand your kingdom, and eventually become the sole emperor. So if you missed our last Game Pass roundup, here's just a quick reminder that Naraka Blade Point has now just come to Game Pass, and this is one that I've been pretty hyped for. It's essentially a battle royale game with a difference though, and sees you and up to 59 other players going head to head on a battlefield inspired by Legends of the Far East. Each player gets to pick a unique customisable hero complete with their own arsenal of melee and ranged weapons and an awesome selection of special abilities, and you can also engage in smaller arena based battles or one on one bows if the whole battle royale thing isn't for you. It looks like it's set to be an awesome game though, and I'll certainly be jumping in for a few battles myself as soon as I find the time. So not technically a June title, but our second and final addition to Game Pass this coming week is Far Cry 5, and I've been a casual fan of the Far Cry games for a while now, but haven't actually got around to playing this one. Like the other games in the series though, Far Cry 5 features Ubisoft's usual open world game design, where in either solo or two player co-op mode, you get to explore Hope County, Montana. The game's story is centred around a fanatical doomsday cult known as Eden's Gate, who are threatening to radicalise the local population with their ideologies, and so it's up to you as a lawman of the county to stop them. Now, from what I hear the story itself's not much cop but the gameplay is as ludicrous as ever and once more offers up a giant playground for you to get lost in. There are a bunch of new and returning features such as hunting, fishing, the ability to hire NPC and animal companions, new vehicles including flyable planes, and even a new arcade mode with a map editor, allowing you to create your own challenges and share them with other players. As always though, the sandbox world of Far Cry 5 will no doubt see you constantly deviating from the main mission course to complete a million and one side quests and optional objectives, and given Ubisoft's track records with these kind of games, it won't stray too far from the standard formula of the previous two games, but if you enjoyed them and are looking to get stuck into more chaotic action and ridiculous hijinks, then you'll no doubt have a blast with this one. 
So before we go, we're going to round off this video with the last of the levers dropping off the service at the end of the month. And as always, in the top left corner, you'll find times to complete the main campaign if the games have one, as well as the completionist times for all you achievement hunters out there. To kick things off though we have FIFA 20, and with the recent addition of FIFA 22 to EA's repertoire, it's no wonder that we're seeing the imminent departure of this one. If you've been watching the channel for a while though, you know my stance on football games. In short, no interest whatsoever, but if you are a fan of them then you've likely been playing FIFA 21 or 22 for the past couple of years, so you probably won't be too bothered about losing this one. The latest games though have more of the good stuff like grass, the latest soccer superstars and plenty of balls for you to play with, and of course the ever prevalent loot box mechanics for you to sink your hard earned cash into. Next to leave is Jurassic World Evolution, and like FIFA, Game Pass has recently added Jurassic World Evolution 2 to its lineup, which features more polished gameplay mechanics and a bunch of new features. If you've ever wanted to run your own Jurassic Park though, these are the games for you. They're essentially theme park world games with dinosaurs, and you'll be responsible for breeding and containing said dinosaurs, as well as putting them on display for paying customers. This first game in the series has plenty of fun to offer, whether you're a fan of the franchise or not, but the second game expands on things, adding new dinosaurs and construction options, as well as some upgraded visuals, but if you want to try out this one before it goes, you've got until the end of the month to do so. More GP20 is our next lever, and again I think it's going to be a case of out with the old and in with the new with this one, as I suspect we'll probably see the latest more GP added to Game Pass sometime in the near future. If you're into your racing games though, specifically bike racing games, then MotoGP 20 is a AAA offering which aims to satisfy your need for speed, with plenty of iconic bikes to select from, realistic physics, improved graphics, and an expanded managerial career mode for you to play through. You can also relive some classic moments in MotoGP history, competing with legendary riders, and overall it's a solid pick if you're a fan of these titles. The final game to leave Game Pass at the end of the month is Last Stop, a third person supernatural adventure game published by, supernatural adventure game published by Anna Purna Interactive, in which you play as three different characters whose worlds collide amidst a supernatural crisis. As you might expect though, this one is heavily narrative driven, featuring full voice acting, and your decisions shape the dialogue as supernatural events see each of the stories intertwining with one another. Unlike other similar games though, your choices don't have too much of an impact on the storyline, however the game is relatively short, so if you were considering giving it a go before it leaves, you should easily be able to polish this one off between other titles. And so that about does it for another month of Game Pass announcements, unless we get another sneaky shadow drop before the end of the month. So what did you think of this month's lineup? Has there been anything in particular that you've enjoyed playing? And what are you looking forward to in the upcoming months? Let us know down in the comments section below. I'll be back next month of course with more Game Pass goodness, but until then be sure to hit that like button to show your support for the channel, subscribe if you're looking for more deals, reviews and Game Pass content, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks everyone, take care.